What is up everyone, Dan the Cardman back again. Welcome to another weekly news video. There's a few important things to talk through today, so let's just jump straight into it. Now, the first one is pretty breaking news at the time of recording. This popped off around 12 hours ago or 14 hours ago, as you can sort of see down here. Essentially, Paul Lesko, who is a lawyer who often flags a lot of trading card related lawsuits, has popped off today on Twitter and said, you know what, Leaf is suing Ronaldinho. Leaf Trading Cards is suing Ronaldinho. Now, Ronaldinho... For those of you that probably don't know who he is, I'd assume most would because even non-soccer fans would know who this guy is. He's probably one of the greatest players of all time. He's played for Barcelona, very popular Brazilian player, obviously top dog, right, when it comes to the sport. Now, essentially, Lee for suing this guy for breach of contract. I think it's got to do with him maybe not fulfilling his end of the deal. Now, I'll put a link to this tweet thread down below so you guys can follow it up yourself. But what is interesting with this, right, there's all the detail here, basically, Paul, let's go you know, talks through the thing end to end, you can see here he initially agreed to, you know, sign 500 autos for $90 a pop. I'm not sure if that's what didn't get fulfilled, if there was another element I can't recall because it's a lot to read. But essentially check it out if you haven't seen it. But what is interesting, as Paul Lesko does flag here, is that the lawyers in this case are the same lawyers that dealt with the Leaf versus Giannis uh, court case that came up in January of this year. Now, I asked a question to Paul down below, essentially... That uh, Leaf v. Giannis um, case basically settled, I think it was last month, is what he says, and very undisclosed fee. So what is interesting about this, given that it's the same lawyers that Giannis used that now Ronaldinho is using, are we going to start seeing maybe this law firm start reaching out to some of these other, you know, players that maybe have issues with Leaf and trying to get, you know, some settlements out of court? Again, I think based on what we're seeing here, it obviously hard to comment on because I'm not a lawyer, but, you know, I think... Leaf's contract, whilst incredibly bare, looks sufficient enough for them to maybe, you know, argue the case around them not getting not getting their worth out of Ronaldinho. But again, there's some very interesting talking points on this. So please check out the thread. Auburn35, who often comments on my channel, um, basically gave a few interesting insights as well. I don't think I can find it here. There we go. But basically, you've got people that are saying, you know, that, you know, Leaf, you don't own the rights to Ronaldinho's image in the first place. So what's going on? So please check this out because his tweet has now since been deleted. Now, that was a lot of information I just gave. Read the thread. You can sort of make up for it yourself. But as Paul does mention also right here, this is the third case that, you know, has been brought forward either to Leaf or by Leaf within the year. So again, very interesting situation. And, you know, the hobby is never a dull place, right? You've got these trading card companies suing these athletes, you know, for not delivering, right? It is what it is. Let's sort of see what happens in the next couple of days. Now, or weeks, months, I should say. Not days. What the heck am I talking about? If it gets settled in days, um, these lawyers would be very disappointed because their fees would be quite low. Now, the next talking point is going to be a quick shout out with regards to two, you know, Lionel Messi or Lionel Messi, I should say, one of ones that were hit in the last couple of days. You obviously had the base plus the, um, the auto. I forget what type of auto it is. I think it's the choice or something along those lines. I forget how it's referred to. But essentially, this was pulled by Carter's Cards, who pulled the one of one, and then Cherry Collectibles, who pulled the auto. Interesting one, because these are huge cards, right? I think there's talks around that this base, like the base card, non-auto version, of the one of one is going to sell for upwards of $100,000 USD, which is, you know, very, very interesting. So I wanted to shout it out for that reason. I, it's pretty cool to see both these cards get pulled within a few days of each other. What is really interesting, though, is that these cards were pulled on the eve of the World Cup final. So, you know, if Messi turns around, wins his Maiden World Cup, in what is likely to be his last ever attempt at one, these cards could be incredibly expensive moving forward, even more so than what they already are. $100,000 for a card is crazy for me, but if this guy can win, you know, the World Cup and have the card or the one of one tied to that World Cup, that's going to be pretty special for a collector. Now, the next thing I want to flag as well is not so much anything to do with card specific news. It's going to be I've caught up this page before on, on, on my videos. Basically, it's Sports Card Scammer Tracker, as you can see over here. This is probably one of the best resources you're going to have, you know, as a collector, as an investor, whatever you are to do with cards in an effort to try and find scammers, right? There's so many people that post in this group, you know, on an hourly basis that you're going to get some pretty detailed insights with one regards to, you know, known scammers, but also some known tricks that pop off every now and then. For the regulars on the channel, you will recall maybe, you know, six months ago, I referred to the PayPal goods and services scam where pay people were still getting scammed even though they were paying using the goods and services method. That was flagged to me through this Facebook group. So just join the group when you're on your Facebook, when you're doing your daily scroll, when you're sitting on the toilet looking at your phone, you know, you might see something that might save you a few bucks. So just want to give it a shout out once again. Please check it out because, you know, pages like this are invaluable. I obviously try and report on 
things that do show up when I can, but you're going to get more active response and more breaking news stuff when it comes to like scammers and things like that through this page, right? You go on this page, you're going to see it on your phone. You're going to be good to go. Now, the final thing I want to talk through today, you would have seen a video that came out yesterday, the same time that this video dropped with regards to an auction I won with a shield item. So that video was recorded four or five days before it dropped. And to give you some more context, if you haven't seen it, essentially, you know, I bought a card on eBay, paid for it, it got shipped, it got delivered. And basically when it got delivered, I, for whatever reason, checked out the eBay listing and I saw that it looked like it was heavily shielded. And apologies if you can hear my dogs barking in the background, but it was heavily shielded, right? And I reached out to eBay and I said, okay, look, I've looked at this auction that I want. I've looked at all these other auctions that ended around the same time. I've looked at other auctions that this seller has run. It looks to me like they're shield bidding, right? Because number one, the same bidders appear to be there. And there looks like there's a few bidders bidding very high amounts that have high bid activity with that specific, you know, user. Now, if you weren't aware, you can check that when you're looking at eBay, right? When you're looking at bidders, there is a function when you can see how frequently a certain buyer or bidder has bid on the items from that specific seller. And this was like, like 90 something percent. It was ridiculously high. So I reached out to eBay and said to them, you know what? Can you please, you know, give me some insight? Because I think this some short bidding occurred. And they said, okay, let's give me five minutes. I'll get back to you. They basically did a bit of a quick analysis, said, you know what? It does look like they're shield bidding on this account, so much so that we've you know escalated it urgently to our shield team. They're going to look into it for you, but you should probably re return this item is what they told me. So that's a long-winded explanation for me to say, I put out this video explaining that situation, but also said and put the question to all you guys as the viewers saying, should I you know return this card? Should I keep it? You know, I was happy to pay the amount. My max bid didn't get overtaken. Should I just be happy? Or should I maybe... Like, what's the right thing to do, right? Is it the seller's fault? Maybe the seller wasn't involved. All these kinds of questions, okay? And, and then in the end, I've actually returned the item, primarily because of what people, you know, said down in the comments of that video saying, you know what, and I've obviously just returned it now, post that video dropping, even though this news is, you know, five or six days old. Um, they basically said, Daniel, sure bidding, you know, you need to sort of call this stuff out. I agree, you need to call it out, which is why I made that video. And you returning that item might action eBay to push this a little bit harder. Who knows, I'm only one person, so maybe not. But again, if the seller is the one doing any unscrupulous behavior, you know, maybe they'll learn and second guess themselves next time they try and do it, which is why you should return the item. Or secondly, if you return the item and the seller's not involved, maybe the seller can try and limit some of the bidding activity, you know, on their, you know, page. So for all those reasons, I'm probably gonna return it or have returned it, I should say. So it is what it is. Just wanted to give you an update on the situation. So, you know, please share your thoughts down below. If you think I did the right thing or the wrong thing, I know I was really undecided on it, Barry, because I, I kind of felt bad. But at the same time, I feel like we need to draw a line in the sand and, you know, start calling this crap out because, you know, you go on social media and specifically on Instagram, it's actually pretty funny that this sort of happened to me. But you go on Instagram and I'm sure I've seen like five or six different, you know, posts by people complaining about the shilling on eBay at the moment. And it's getting worse. So maybe something like this is a step in the right direction. Maybe me making the video saying, you know what, this is what happened. I figured it out. I saw shield bidding. I reached out to eBay customer support. They agree with me. And then they back me up when it came to doing an item return. Maybe if some people see this video and start doing the same sort of thing, you know, eBay might start taking this stuff more seriously. The sellers might taking this, start taking this stuff more seriously. So it is what it is. Please share your thoughts down below on any of the points we discussed today. And like I said a bit earlier, follow that Facebook group. It's going to save you a lot of money from some of these, you know, very, very dodgy scammers. That was sort of it for this week. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.